Well, hello, folks. It's kind of a dreary, rainy day today. Not to mention the fact that we're all kind of stuck here because of this COVID-19 virus. Wishing we had something to do to entertain ourselves. Well, usually you'll find me posting a video on my house project or on a fiddle or a guitar. But I'm also an avid motorcyclist. And I have a couple of new toys and I've got a new project. It's quite a hike up here to the top of my hill. But it's great exercise. I'll show you what I got hidden away. I have a couple new bikes in here. If you watched one of my other videos, you might remember that my wife was learning to ride a motorcycle. Well, she got her license and she picked out her dream bike. So my wife picked out this 2017 Indian Scout 60. Well, I couldn't stand her having a faster, better looking bike than me, so I had to get one too. So I bought a 2015 Indian Scout. Well, while we have enjoyed ripping around on our little hot rods for the past few weeks, we found that we're lacking in the ability to carry stuff. Now we added those nice little tail bags and those are great for gloves or a hat or water or a snack. But sometimes we want to carry home some groceries. Or maybe we want to go on a trip if they ever lift the travel bans. Well, I don't know if you've seen the prices for motorcycle saddlebags and quick-release hardware, but it's kind of insane. A couple of bags and some hardware for anywhere from $500 to $1,100. Well, two things. I'm cheap, and I'd like to say that cheapness breeds creativity. Let's head into my shop and see what I've got cooking. Sitting in here on my workbench is my idea of some inexpensive motorcycle luggage. This is the Apache 3800 series weatherproof protective case from good old Harbor Freight. Let me give you a brief overview of these bags and why I chose them. Now first of all I needed something to fit the scale of the Scout. Nothing too big I looked at what was available online, sweepy, curvy stuff, bags with studs, conchos, fringe, no fringe. I don't know. You're making a dramatic style choice when you choose bags. Now the Scout's a little edgy. I want something different, something a little angular myself. And most of all, inexpensive or cheap. Now these things here with the appropriate coupon go for around $30. They're only, I think, $37 or $8 if you pay full price, and they are rugged. Let's take a look at what you get for your paltry $30-some dollars. Now my first impressions of this case are is it's very rugged. The material is robust. I would not hesitate to stand on this or sit on it. The latches are nice, the handle is secure, it has locking points, the lid hinges nicely and has stops in it. It comes filled with this, they call pick and peel foam, and the idea is to put in your, your handgun or your camera equipment or audio visual equipment and then you can take these layers and you can pick and peel out sections of it to create compartments for whatever you desire. I, of course, am going to remove all this. Uh, note a nice 
rubber weather seal around the perimeter of the sealing edges. I did a lot of looking around online at pictures of the Indian Scout with luggage attached. You know, and bags that are too small look really stupid, and bags that are too big look really dumb. And since the whole idea behind motorcycling is not to look either stupid or dumb, but to look cool, I needed the right size. And these here fall right in the parameter of the perfect or close to the perfect size for the Indian Scout. Oh, I didn't mention the depth this way. Good six inches inside, maybe six and a half. Um, plenty big to carry home, some groceries and whatnot. So after deciding on a size, I looked around what was available and I got the idea about using these Harbor Freight bags. So I went and bought two on Faith to try out. Now I need a way to mount them. Hard mounting them is a cakewalk. Head to the hardware store, there's plenty of stuff, and you could mount these right up fairly easily. Um, but I wanted a quick release system because I want to be able to wash the back wheel and fender of my bike. I want these off and on when I want for maintenance. Well, you could spend $159.99 on easy brackets, and those are what my wife calls push here dummy brackets you just stick them on the bike it probably take you 20 minutes well back to the cheapness breeding ingenuity theme there's got to be a better way so i hunted around to see what i had for materials i found a set of spools for mounting luggage to a bike on ebay for 48 dollars for a set of four so it's 12 bucks a piece and they go together like this. And then I did a little measuring. And that gap right there is just over an eighth of an inch. The inside diameter right here is three quarters of an inch. I scrounged around and found this sheet of eighth inch aluminum from back when I made a luggage rack for one of my Victory motorcycles. And it happens to be the perfect thickness to make some kind of a luggage bracket. Well, step one would be to make some kind of a mock-up on the bike and actually get the bag up there to check for position and work out whatever bugs I could. Well. I have a scrap of some eighth inch birch plywood. So I took it up the hill and I tried a couple mock-ups of a bracket. Here are the spools mounted on the motorcycle. And this is my initial idea. Well, my first attempt went something like this. I cut out my mock-up and fit it in place and boy it looked good I even mounted the bags seemed pretty stable with that much surface area to grab onto but I had one problem looking straight down from above you can see the spools are not parallel I can cut the aluminum easy enough on the table saw, and I could just make four brackets and then bend them to accommodate the angles of the spools, but I really don't have enough material. So my next option is to make smaller brackets, separate pieces, two for each bag. Make sure you put these on. Do not do this without eye protection. My little plate is three by four inches and I'm just going to use this whole saw I picked up at the lumber yard 
and I'm going to drill a one inch hole just using my cordless drill. I could use a drill press, but I don't think we need to be that fancy. The next step is to cut the opening. Safety glasses, and listen, I am not endorsing cutting aluminum on your table saw. I'm just showing you what I'm doing. So my recommendation is that you never do this. Now I'll just finish up the cut on the bandsaw, which is a lot safer. I know I'm going to get a whole bunch of grief for cutting aluminum on that saw, but that's tough. That's just the way it is. Um, I don't recommend anybody else ever doing it. Of course, the bandsaw is an option, and that's fairly safe. You know, I would recommend you clamping this to a surface and using a good old-fashioned hacksaw. It will do an adequate job. No risk to your fingers. Now, all I'm going to do is take my file here, and I'm going to smooth up all my edges and get this thing looking real pretty, and then we'll fit it to the bags. Here's the brackets after getting cleaned up with a little steel wool. Here's the back side of our bag, and it has these little lines molded into the bag. I don't know if they're for reinforcing or just for looks, but they were very helpful in locating the bag on the bike. I was able to press this up against the spools as they're mounted on the fender. And I found the ideal location is right up against this top line. And back here on this section. But now I can use my little uh, template, we'll call it, to locate the position of the two spools, which will give us, of course, the location for our brackets. And then I can drill my holes and mount them. As I drill each hole, I drop in a bolt to help keep the bracket aligned. And now that I have most of them drilled, I can slide my template out and then drill my final holes. This is what the bracket will look like mounted on the bag. Now all that remains will be to get that angle we need to allow for the offset of the spools. And I'm just going to make up some spacers. Well now I need to choose a good material to make these spacers to space my brackets out. Something maybe plastic. Now I was thinking of using a cutting board. And I went and scoured through my wife's collection of nylon cutting boards and there wasn't anything I could steal. It would be a terrific material. They come in different thicknesses. It's easy to cut. But I can't make a trip to Walmart because we have this traveling ban in effect. Well, you know what I do have? I've got all kinds of pipe from plumbing and electrical work up on the hill. And each diameter pipe comes with a different wall thickness. So I could use this. So let me show you a little trick you can use if you ever hard up for a nice piece of PVC material for a project. I'm just going to cut each of these in half. Now, on a scrap piece of material, 
we'll take out our trusty heat gun and we're going to warm these babies up. It doesn't take more than a few minutes and you'll notice it starts to get flexible. We're going to flatten it out and let it cool. There we go. Now we'll let that cool down and we'll have a nice flat piece of PVC material. Now about four or five minutes later, we have some nice flat stock to work with. And I'm going to use my hole saw I used earlier to make some nice spacers. Okay, next time I will clamp it down. And now, with the workpiece properly clamped down, take two. Now, after a little bit of drilling, I have a collection of three different size spacers. And now I can take two or three at a time and put them on a bolt with a nut to hold them in place and spin them up in the, the chuck of my drill and with a piece of sandpaper I can smooth them off and shape them real nice. Now I have plenty of spacers in an assortment of thicknesses. So now I need a flat surface for my new spacer to sit. So I'm just going to take a chisel I'm just going to pare down this little raised area. Here are the spacers I've decided to try. Ready to mount the bracket. All right, boys and girls. That's it. The bracket's on. You can see I've got my slight outward angle. Now I'm going to do a test fit, and then there's one or two more things to do before we're done. Okay, here I have fit it on the bike, and it slid right down in place like it's supposed to. And one of my worries was missing that belt guard. And as you can see, I do have enough clearance to miss it. Now, even if I press on this bag, ooh, I can almost knock the bike over and not deflect it enough for it to interfere with the rear suspension. Well, we're almost done. I fit it to the bike. Now you say to yourself, yeah, but some dude's going to come by and just rip these off the bike and take off with them. Not so. I have devised a little security device. And it looks like this. So what you do is you carry this and you stand near your bike. And then in the event that someone tries to take this, you start beating them with this rubber hose until they let go. No, actually, as fun as that would be, <laughs> we're gonna use this piece of rubber hose to make an expansion plug. Now the inside diameter of this spool is three quarters of an inch. Well, the outside diameter of some half inch heater hose is also three quarters of an inch and it fits nicely right in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this T-nut, this quarter 20 bolt, and this washer, and we're going to make an expansion plug. Now what I originally thought of was the rubber plug that goes in the transom on my boat, or the plug in a bait well. And those do come in three-quarter inch diameter. But anyway, we're quarantined or whatever. We can't get out, so we have to make do. Well, I take that T-nut with the little barbs, and I press it into the end of this little piece of hose. It's about an inch and three-quarters long. And then I take my little bolt in my washer, and I thread them in. Now... If I were to insert that into the spool and then tighten down this nut, it'll expand 
and it's not going anywhere. Well, watch this. I drilled a three quarter inch hole directly in line with the center of our mounting spool. So as we mount the bag on the bike, these holes line up and then we take our homemade expansion plug and we insert it into the hole and we tighten our nut and this bag is going nowhere. I'm pretty excited to show you the final product. It came out so well. I went online to Harbor Freight. I ordered two more bags and I went on eBay and got a couple more spools for my wife's bike and we'll have matching set. And while I was here working, I went ahead and I made all the pieces to put bags on her bike. All right. It's time for the big reveal. Let's go outside. Well, here she is. My 2015 Indian Scout. And here's the new bags. Notice my nice little detail. Those stickers are available at the Indian dealership. Here's a look from the rear. There seems to be plenty of space for the belt guard. Oh no, I didn't cover my license plate. Peek inside, these are the nice latches. And you can see where the spool lines up. And these are holes from my first prototype with the wooden mounts. Of course, we need to add lock nuts and some blue Loctite. All right, we're gonna try a little saddlebag usage demonstration. So obviously there's no bag on the bike, just the spools. Here's our bag and our new mounts. Goes right on. It's secure enough to knock the bike over. Now I didn't put in the locking spool. But, you know, it's a good spot, driving down the road and you need a snack. Right there, snack time. Uh, my wife is working on bag liners so that stuff doesn't fall out. But overall, I think these are a rousing success. I hope you like them. I hope you enjoyed my little video even if you aren't an avid motorcyclist and maybe you could take something away from it that might be useful to you in some other field of your life. I hope I proved that cheapness can be the mother of ingenuity and next video I hope to show you around the homestead up on the hill and maybe insert a little music into that video as well. See you next time.